Greetings and blessings to you all, whoever you are and wherever you may be. The Lutheran Church of Australia is celebrating Reformation Sunday today. The actual anniversary of the Reformation is next Saturday, October 31. But as the following day, Sunday, Sunday November 1, is traditionally All Saints Day, which we will also be commemorating next Sunday, we have decided to, in a small way, remember the Reformation of the Church today. God says to us, I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I now invite you to join with me as we pray the prayer of the day. And let us pray that we love God and our neighbour. Thank you, our living and ever-present God, for giving us your only Son, who is love. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, inspire us to love you with all our heart, soul, mind and strength, and to love our neighbour as we love ourselves. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we join to sing the Reformation hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
The psalm for today is, comes from Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on its, his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In, in all, all that they, they do, do they, they prosper. prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of righteousness. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteousness, but the way of the wicked will perish. Glory, Glory to the Father, and the Son, and, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forevermore. Amen. Amen. The epistle reading for today is written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 8. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God, in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit, or impure motives or trickery. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So, so deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. The Gospel reading for today is written in Matthew chapter 22, verse 34 to 46. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question. What do you think of the Messiah? Who's his son? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We're here today with Rebecca and Josh and Stephanie, and we want to talk a little bit about what it's been like in the last few weeks. So guys, what have been some of the challenges that you've had to face while we've been locked down and locked away? Yeah, oh, for me, the um, biggest challenge probably personally is the sport. You haven't been able to get out and about and get active. Okay. So struggle. And it's also been hard, like, being away from all your friends and you can't really go see them at all. Like, all you can do is just go for a walk occasionally, but okay. sometimes it might be hard to organise. Or, yeah. Yeah, and something that's definitely been hard is not being at school and, like, surrounded by your peers and teachers and just the um, school community and like, having to work by yourself without having that same level of 
help and communication has been right. challenging. Okay. It has been tough, hasn't it? But in that time, have you also seen God's blessing over you? Have you felt God's care for you in your lives? Yeah. Okay, who can think of something that's been good, that's been a blessing to you? Well, like, we found more time to, like, just go and enjoy ourselves and, like, we can go for walks now and we don't have to be, like, rushing back to go to sport or, like, school or anything like that. And so we just have some more time just to relax. And do okay. Yeah, for me it's been, yeah, good to spend more time with the family. Like, yeah, doing more stuff around home, playing board games, that sort of thing. Yeah, it's been uh -huh. Mm, and I guess we've just been looking after ourselves and also looking out for other people more and mm -hmm. just finding the time to bless others and spend time together. Okay, how have you been able to bless other people? Um, well, we're blessed with like a really beautiful garden and we've had a lot of produce from that so we've been able to share that with others. Awesome. And we've also like sometimes made some cookies for other people just to brighten their day. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah. So there's lots of little things that you can do too that help you to be a blessing. And that reminds me a bit about how in our readings today, Jesus tells us that the most important thing that we must do is to love God and to love God with all our heart and all our mind and our, all our soul. And so with everything that we are. And then he says, the second commandment is like it. We should love other people as we love ourselves. I notice that you're missing relationships. Okay, so relationships with other people. But your family has also been a blessing to you too in that time, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Have you learnt something about each other in that time? Oh well, yeah. We learnt that we can still like help each other and like we like we can all help each other and like we just get along pretty well when like yeah, there's nothing to fight over. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we also like appreciate and respect each other more. Like having like just seen another side of them when we're not at school and having all that extra and all activities. That stuff. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, would you like to join me in a short prayer? Yep. Okay. And everyone who's watching can join along too. Lord Jesus, you asked us to love God with all our hearts and all our minds and all our souls. Can you please help us to do that? And Lord Jesus, may we also remember to love each other in big ways and small, because that is what you have done for us. Amen. Thanks, guys. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The text I've chosen for today's address is from the Gospel reading in Matthew chapter 22 and focusing on verses 35 and 36. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment is in the law is the greatest? For many of us, school was a long time ago. For some of us, it was a long, long time ago. But I'm wondering whether there was ever a time when perhaps you or one of your classmates got one over on your teacher. You know, when you or a classmate were able to point out that what your teacher was saying was incorrect. How did that go, I wonder? I remember one such incident. The student, definitely not me, was truly gifted academically. And he went on to become joint ducks of the school with his twin brother. And the last I heard of him was that he was a, a top flight lawyer in Brisbane. Anyway, 
He had the great pleasure of being able to correct a glaring error our teacher had made. We all thought he was a hero, well, for that day anyway. And to his credit, our teacher ate his humble pie most graciously. Why relate like this story? Well, it reminds me of the antics of the Sadducees and the Pharisees, whom Jesus was speaking with all the way from Matthew chapter 21, verse 23 and following. And I invite you to take the opportunity to check out this discussion for yourself. It makes for interesting and enlightening reading. Only here, the teacher, Jesus, is schooling the Jewish leaders. An interesting aside to this story is that the two groups ganging up on Jesus, the Sadducees and, and the Pharisees, were normally at each other's throats. Much, much like current political foes who, who refuse to look for common ground. So for them to combine forces against Jesus had great significance in that time. In the prelude to today's Gospel reading, the Sadducees had been corrected by Jesus on the topic of the Resurrection. The Pharisees, who firmly believed in resurrection from the dead for those who strictly followed the laws, they were in a state of euphoria and openly gloated that their traditional foes had been taken down a notch or two. And in yet another attempt to catch Jesus off guard, the Pharisees send in the heavy artillery, a notary, a learned lawyer, and this stooge came with a carefully conceived question designed to trap Jesus. This stiff-necked outlook is itself amazing because of the contrast with the onlooking crowd who most definitely recognised that Jesus' teaching was astounding. It was amazing. It was astonishing. You know what, friends? We can all learn a lesson from that crowd. Because Jesus' gospel, his good news, is astounding. It is amazing. It's astonishing. And we too need the gospel's warm light of love and joy and discipleship shone into our lives, as it did for the crowd gathered at Jesus' feet. So, the Pharisees, <laughs> feeling pretty good about themselves, send in their champion with a carefully crafted question, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Yeah, so the funny thing is, the Pharisees thought this was a pretty clever, pretty clever attack. After all, there are mere 613 laws to choose from. So which one of them? ranks as the greatest. 613 laws and commandments? <laughs> God gave Moses just 10, didn't he? Yes, the Jewish rabbis in the time between the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai and Jesus' time on earth had concocted 613 laws. 248 with a positive viewpoint, and 365, yep, that's one for every day of the year, with negative outlooks. And to get so many extra laws, the Pharisees had employed a complicated Kabbalistic method of interpreting the Hebrew scripture. Now, these extra laws caused great friction between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Sadducees rejected any law that was only the tradition of the fathers and not part of God's written law. So, as mentioned earlier, it was very significant that for once they should team up against Jesus. But Jesus, 
being who he is, saw right through their ruse. The Pharisees came with tried and tested human thoughts. Jesus came with higher thoughts and gave the only answer that he could. And it's the same answer we are to have to that same question. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind or your strength. And then, as Jesus did, you shall also love your neighbour as yourself. Mark's Gospel account of this incident tells us that the, that the young notary, but not the Pharisees, was impressed with Jesus' answer. And Luke further expands the same story with the parable of the Good Samaritan. But whichever Gospel account we may read, the same message prevails. Love and respect God without reservation. And love and respect your neighbour as you do yourself. But what love are we talking about here? It's clear that Jesus is not referring to the love you have for your favourite footy club or, or your family pets or your new car or even the nice fuzzy warm love besties have for each other. Here Jesus is talking about agape love, the unconditional, unquestioned and undeserved love that he showers on us all. It is the love that Jesus asks us to share with our family, with our friends, with our neighbours, and even, or especially, with our so-called enemies. And it's the hardest kind of love there is to give. It's a love that comes from your heart. It's a love that comes from deep down in your inner being. It's an instinctive love that you can only that you can really trust and rely on. It's also a love that is thoughtful and considered, a love that comes from your mind. It's the love that God gives to us so that we can share it with others. Why? It's his plan for everyone because he created us with love to love. But why do we find this kind of love so hard to demonstrate? God answered this question best even before he sent his son to the world to be our saviour. In a conversation with Isaiah the prophet, God says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God's ways are so much better than ours. God also has higher thoughts than anyone else. Jesus himself acknowledges this in the Lord's Prayer where we pray, your will be done on earth as in heaven. And Jesus went on to demonstrate this in his anguished cry in the Garden of Gethsemane. Lord, not my will, but yours be done. God's ways and thoughts are higher, better and purer than ours. But they are what we are to aspire to in order to fulfil God's command to love as we are so lavishly loved and to forgive as we are so mercifully forgiven. To wrap things up, you know, the 21st century, in the 21st century, 
We have the great advantage of so many resources readily available to aid and to help us. For better or for worse, we have internet and social media resources coming out of our ears. And for those not quite tech savvy, we still have written lit literature in books, all of which record what has gone on, is going on, and with far too many future predictions regarding all aspects of supposed future life. One of these resources is God's Word in the Bible, which tells us the past, but is just as pertinent today and also gives us directions for a better future. In a very limited sense, John the Evangelist, the same man who wrote John's Gospel, had the same advantage we do, but with way less technology. He had the advantage of seeing and hearing and digesting what had happened through Jesus' ministry and to Jesus' life. And with this intimate knowledge, in 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 11, John gives us a beautiful summary of Jesus' message about love to the Pharisees, to the Sadducees, and the crowds gathered, then and now. John writes, Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. Really, what more needs to be said other than this? Since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. The best thing is that we don't need to die on the cross as Jesus did to show us this love. We don't need to, because he did. We just need to love God and others with all we have, heart, soul, strength and mind. Amen. And the peace of God, which is beyond all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord and Saviour, who is love. Amen.
Now friends, having heard and sung Jesus' message of love, about love, we now confess that we struggle to show love, and we humbly ask God to forgive us for this and all other sins that we are guilty of. Lord God, we confess that we struggle to share the love that you give us with those around us. Lord, we need your love and your forgiveness. Please forgive us in Jesus' name for this and all other sins we knowingly and unknowingly commit. Dear friends in Christ, hear this amazing news. God is slow to anger and full of love. When we confess our sins and ask for his forgiveness, out of love, he says yes. Go in peace. Your sins are truly forgiven. In the name of Christ. Amen. And now we join with all our brothers and sisters on earth to confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. We come to our Lord in prayer. Creator God, you have given us a wonderful world around us that is beautiful in these spring months. Help us to take the time to stop and appreciate the beauty of your creation as our lives gradually become busier. Thank you for the soaking rains as we pray for your blessing for a good grain harvest, plenty of feed for stock and financial boost for our community. Help those who are seeking workers in their harvest. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, be with those who are hurting. Be with the widows and widowers. May they find comfort in you in their time of grief. Give us open hearts and minds to respond to the needs of others in our community in sensitive and meaningful ways. May we live out your commandment to love our neighbour as we love ourselves. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we ask for your presence in the homes and the streets of our community. Help us to reach out and care for those who are marginalised, homeless or unemployed. We pray for that children and families in need of a home will be guided to places of safety and security. Help support those who have lost their jobs and all who are seeking employment. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for families and their community during this pandemic. Give wisdom and strength to single parents. Bless them with quality time with their children. Be with those families who are separated by border and Melbourne restrictions, helping them to be patient while, meet, while waiting to meet face to face, to face again and giving them wisdom in keeping them connected. Be with people who are struggling at home with the restrictions and changes around them, whether at work, at home, or in community activities. Help us to reach out with words of encouragement and acts of support. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord of Justice, we thank you for the democratic freedoms that we have in Australia. We pray for the election of councillors across our region. We pray that they fairly represent the community and guide them with their decisions and directions. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Refresh our spirits, Lord, as we seek to live each day in the light of your word and to follow your will in our lives. Keep us from being prisoners to the ways of the Lord. We pray all these things in your wonderful name, Lord. Amen. 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 And we will now pray the Lord, the, and now pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Love the Lord your God above all things, and love your neighbour as yourself. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his face on you and be gracious to you. The Lord be merciful to you and give you his everlasting love and peace. Amen. And now let's join us together and pass our love around. Take my brother's hand and pass my love around. 